I was on summer holiday in 1984 and I went to visit a friend I had gone to school with, a, a friend who was a girl, not a girlfriend. <laughs> And I knocked on the door of her new apartment in Kingston, Ontario, and her new roommate opened the door. And then uh, after blatantly hitting on her for several weeks, she finally agreed to go out with me. And then three years later, she agreed to marry me. And that's the guy version. Yeah, that's How's the guy that? version. There's a girl version, by the way. Isabel is my on-call staff, sadly, all night long. And when I'm in distress, I have to wake her up. Even when she was sleeping in the same room, she couldn't hear me because she's hard of hearing. So we had to come up with a way that I could contact her. On his end, he needed to use Sip and Puff technology to trigger an alarm. And we knew that on my end, it had to be the same kind of alarm that I use typically to get up, which is a vibrating disc alarm. I was uh, impressed the energy these young people had to move all these issues forward and working really hard to try to help, help people like me. They really seemed motivated to, to make it all work. It was quite fun to see them go. What I loved was just uh, the energy in the room. There was nothing like it. I think the cool part is seeing the exchange of knowledge, like, you know, from you to them, yeah. and them to you. And perhaps more than knowledge, that exchange of insight into each other's worlds. I think that's the big part of what the Makeathon is there for, is that insight that disabled people get into a maker's world, but certainly these makers get into what it's like to live as a disabled person. So I think that's really cool.